Hi, this is Dr. Naidu. Today I'm going to be going through some of the drawings I do for my breast reduction patients when they come in for their initial consult. And I'm going to give you a little disclaimer here that I am absolutely not an artist. I just need you to bear with me as I do these. So the basic concept of a breast reduction is pretty straightforward. We're making cuts on the breast. We're opening up the tissue almost like an envelope, reducing underneath what we don't want. We are elevating the breast up, so you do get a breast lift as part of the procedure. Then we redrape the extra skin, cut up the excess, and sew you up. And that's the basic idea. So there are two ways to do this. The more traditional way is to make an incision around the nipple area of the complex in which we are reducing it, straight down on the breast, and then underneath. So you may hear this called the inverted T or the wise pattern incision. Um, there, are, It's a very reliable way of doing a breast reduction. It's a, the most traditional way that we do it, and we all learn how to do this in our training. The more modern way of doing it involves an incision around the nipple irregular complex and then straight down. And in some cases, there might be a little bit of an incision at the base, but in general, it's just that incision. So this one is commonly called the inverted, I'm sorry, the vertical incision, the keyhole incision, or the limited incision. And this is what I really prefer to do in probably 95 to 99% of my patients. They're both very, very good, reliable techniques. I prefer this one because um, in addition to fewer scars, the surgery is a bit faster and it gives a nicer shape to the breast over the long term. In the short term, both breasts look fantastic with either technique, but um, with this technique over time, it just holds up better and it gives a nicer shape. This is a really good technique that looks fantastic on the table, but it does tend to bottom out with time, meaning that the tissue tends to drop down. And the reason is that the tissue that we're taking out with this technique is primarily at the sides and at the top. So what's left at the bottom tends to follow gravity and just go south. With this guy, we are primarily taking out the tissue at the bottom and at the side, the lateral aspect towards the armpit. So we're leaving all this nice stuff at the top to give you more fullness at the top and also in the ins inside of the breast. So as a result, you don't have much to fall down. It just tends to stay up. So that's why over the long term, this one tends to look a little bit better. So that's my te preferred technique in the majority of patients. So when we go to the operating room, we do the procedure. Um, every surgeon's different in terms of how long it takes them. Usually it will take me an hour and a half to two hours to do a breast reduction. Again, a little bit longer for larger reductions, a little bit less time for smaller reductions. But um, that timing varies from one surgeon to the next and it's not an indication of how good or how bad a surgeon is. When patients wake up, I typically will put drains in and I'll put them in at the side and usually just through a small one centimeter incision. So if you don't use a metric system, one centimeter um, is 2.54 centimeters equals an inch. So it's less than half an inch. It's a very small incision. So we put drains on both sides. I like to keep those drains in overnight and I'll usually see patients in the office the next morning. We'll take out the drains and we'll do a little bit of lymphatic drainage on the sides of the breast where the swelling tends to accumulate over here. So we like to do that the next morning and I find that that's really helpful for patients. It's something I just started doing maybe about uh, three or four years ago and I found that patients really benefit from it in terms of their swelling coming down faster. Uh, not many surgeons will do that for breast reductions. It's just something that I like to do and my patients seem to like. In terms of drains, um, also very surgeon dependent. During my training uh, over 20 years ago, we never put drains in. And um, about 10 years ago in my practice, I did start using drains because I found that patients just recovered a lot faster. They had less swelling and less bruising. So that's how I like to do that. What I'll also do is typically I'll see patients at about two weeks after surgery, and at that point, I will take out their uh, stitches, usually just two or three stitches on each breast. Everything else will dissolve. And then I'll see them again at three months and six months out from surgery. So that's just a brief description of how we set up for a breast reduction, what the different options are. Both are excellent options, and it's very surgeon dependent. But my preference really always is for this limited incision if I can possibly do it if the breast is not too large. So if you'd like more information, please go to my website at nidoplasticsurgery.com or you can give us a call at the office at 212-452-1230. Thank you.